Hey everyone, it's Derek Taylor Swift here. Hey now, I heard that you're Weisenheimer. Okay, it's Jack. And today we're going to take a look at Gecko Linux. Gecko Linux is a Linux distribution, or spin as they like to call it, based on the OpenSUSE distro. Now Gecko Linux has a focus on polish and out of the box usability right on the desktop, which is really cool. And it's also available in a static base and a rolling base. And what I'm going to take a look at today is the rolling release. The difference between the two, the static is based on OpenSUSE Leap 15. Dot, I think it's 4, and the rolling is based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And so Tumbleweed is something I've used a number of times and really like the OpenSUSE distro out there. It's really nice RPM based distro. And so what I'm assuming here is that Gecko Linux probably fills in some of the blanks like when you install OpenSUSE. Typically I have to add in some repositories and you know little tweaks like that. So I'm thinking that Gecko is probably kind of filling in those blanks there. And it looks like VLC player is already installed by default. And if I remember correctly in OpenSUSE, you gotta install the Pac-Man repos before you can do that. So that looks really nice. And then here we got a list of features real quick. Aside from the installable live DVD USB image, which is under two gigs in size, which is nice. They also have individual editions for many different popular desktop environments with a pleasant default config. Well, cool. We'll have to check that out and we'll find out. And also they've carefully selected some open source desktop programs and proprietary media codecs pre-installed and ready to use. I like that too. That makes things a lot nicer to have those all right there and ready to go right out of the box. I like that. It's using the ButterFS sub volume layout and just a host of other cool stuff. So I just can't wait to dig in. I'm going to load this in right now and let's check it out. Okay, so here I am. I got this loaded in. So let's boot into the live version and just do a real quick install. I think they're probably using the Calamari's installer. So this ought to actually be a quick and easy install. And as you can see it booting up here, we got our Tumbleweed logo here. So yes, absolutely based on the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So it's got a nice solid base here. I am liking this. So we ought to have a screen here any second now. So now we're booted in and wow, it looks nice. Kind of see this background and I'm going to just scooch up a little bit just above this guy. And there's our menu there. So that looks nice. And this is our workspace area and looks really good. I like that setup. And then this is our language installer and our install system is, which is what we actually want. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an install real quick. And as you can see, it's using the Calamari's installer. Excellent. And showing that this is the Gecko Linux rolling. And I'm going to go with the defaults here. These are all good. And for our partitions, I'm just going to select erase disk and just let it overwrite everything. So nothing will be left except a new system. And then I'll add in my username and then we'll just tab down and type in a password. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to leave the box checked for use the same password for administrator and then hit install. And here it's giving us a little summary, letting us know that we can't undo this. So I'm okay with that. I'm going to hit install. And, oh wait, I knew I want to undo it. Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let this go and I'll be right back right after the install finishes. I'm just going to go down into this menu and hit the shutdown and click shutdown. And I'll be back. Okay, we're booting in. Looking good so far. Here's our boot up screen. I like it. Gonna hit that. I see we're using the 5.19.1-1 kernel. So that's pretty latest and greatest. Nice. So, so far so good. And here's our login. So I'm just gonna log in. And with luck, everything worked. Okay, and here we are. And here's our desktop. Wow, looks really nice already. And so here we got a couple of stickies and then up here we got our 
beautiful cinnamon menu, nice. And there's our file manager, and I'm assuming that's Nemo, and it is, so very good. We got our Nemo 5.22 running. A lot of times you see that in the icon default, but I kind of like this, this view mode, so I think this is nice. Really cool. And then I'm just gonna scooch out of the way here. <laughs> there we go. And then that way we can kind of check out this stuff down here. Here's our volume control in the panel. So these are our panel items. And then over here, our clipboard manager, and then our network settings. And here we got our calendar. I always like the calendar in Cinnamon. It's always just done so well. And then here's our time and date settings for our clock. So when you pop over here, you can change that to 24 hour if you like to see the 24 hour time. Here we can display seconds. So you can see down there in the taskbar, seconds are now rolling. And then if I click that back off, then it'll be back to its default setting. So that's where you can kind of tweak that. And there's your time zone there. So you can click in that map too as well if you want to tweak the time zone. And then here at the end, we got our user settings we, where we can log in, power down, lock screen, and so forth. And then here we have our language installer. I'm just gonna look at that real quick. I think that just kind of installs language packs probably to the software center. Uh, but I'm not sure. It looks like it's doing an update first, and that's cool. We can kind of see our repos and so forth. And so there you can see the Tumbleweed OSS repos showing up. And there I can see Skype stable, cool. So I'm just gonna hit yes here, but here you can see all these different updates that are getting ready to run. So it's doing the updater first, and typically I like to update first anyway. So might as well just do it. And it's gonna update our kernel too to 5.19-2. Dash 1.2, excellent. And I thought I saw the Pac-Man repo in there too. That's good to see. We got our updates out of the way, so that's nice to see. And so that was kind of a convenient thing. But if you don't have a language need, then I wouldn't even worry about that language pack. I'd probably just toss it in the trash. <laughs> However, here's our language tab. And so these are all these different kinds of languages that you can add in, so you got Arabic and all kinds of stuff, Welsh, German. So if you have a second language or you're using a language other than English and you, for some reason, install in English or some other language, and there's Chinese. So you can add in that as well, especially if you're doing pinyin, you wanna have a, a pinyin feature going on, then that would be the place to go. So there you go. That was our language slash updates. <laughs> so anyways, after installing all this stuff, I'm just gonna finish this and do a restart because uh, we upgraded our kernel and so forth on your upgrades. It is good just to restart your system all together and uh, get a fresh start. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna jump in here, hit this, and then click our restart. And I'll be back right after the restart. Okay, here I am in the login. And we'll just get it logged in here. And that should take care of all the updates and keep it stable. And so, yes, let's look around and see what kind of cool stuff is here. So I'm gonna go in our menu here and jump up here. Here we have our all applications, our accessories, like our calculator, our Mate search tool. Nice screenshot. And then our graphics programs here. So we got a, a picture viewer, a drawing app and LibreOffice Draw, and something called Pix for organizing your pictures. And then on our internet, we got like Thunderbird here, which is an email client, and then Transmission, which is a BitTorrent. And then we also have Pigeon, which is like a chat, and then of course, Firefox. And here's our Office outfit. So it looks like we're using LibreOffice. Excellent. And then under Sound and Video, we got our Clementine Music Player, and then a Pulse Audio volume control, which we have on our panel already. And then VLC Media Player, which is already pre-installed. So nice to see that in there as well. And then under Admin, we have things like our HP drivers for HP printers, which is nice. A language installer, which we just saw. Print settings. SUSE Image Writer. I really like their Image Writer. It's one of the best, in my opinion. 
uh, really great for writing ISOs to your USB stick. Here I'm opening the terminal. And let's go in here and let's take a look at our kernel, which should be, yes, 519.2-1. So we got a little update there on the kernel and HTOP is not installed, not surprising. So I'm gonna install that. I'm gonna do sudo zipper in for install and then HTOP and type in my password. And now it's loading in and I'm gonna type Y for yes to load it in. And remember in OpenSUSE, it's no by default. So if you just hit enter, it'll just kind of go back to your screen. And there's our HTOP, nice. And I'm gonna enlarge this a little bit. And as you can see, it's only using 745, 753 megs. So yes, really good. Nice resource usage there, not heavy at all. And I'm feeling that too, it's feeling very light. So onward and upward. Here under preferences, we got all the usual stuff that you'd find in Cinnamon. Back in admin, you can see we our HTOP is installed now, showing up, and YAST. YAST is our software center we were in a little while ago, and we're gonna explore that a little bit more. It also has YAST Partitioner, which is nice if you know what you're doing. <laughs> and let's just open the, SA the YAST software. I'm gonna hit type in my password, and let's take a closer look at this because we were just kind of in the backside of it and we didn't really look at all of it. So we'll revisit this real quick. Jump over here and here's where you can search for software. Here's a list of all our repos. So you can see over on the left hand side, we got things like Google Chrome, Google Talk plugin, NVIDIA. There's our Pac-Man Tumbleweed. That's a really important one to have in there. So if you're just using Tumbleweed, you wanna have the Pac-Man app repositories in there for a lot of different apps, especially things like VLC and OBS, I think uh, uh, you would need Pac-Man. I'm gonna just type in Inkscape and see, and it looks like latest and greatest, 1.2.11. And that's another thing I like about these RPM based distros like OpenSUSE and so forth is you get quite new software with, but not giving up the stability. So that's really cool. So I'm just gonna install that real quick. And here it's showing all our dependencies. I'm just gonna hit continue. And it's running very fast. The YAST is very responsive. So I'm liking that as well. Okay, so we got Inkscape installed. I'm gonna hit finish. And now if I go here, we should see it in our graphics category and there it is, beautiful. So that installed very quickly. Uh, the YAS Software Center actually is a really nice package manager. It's something that I've always liked, never really complained about it. <laughs> so let's look at our panel settings. Here's panel edit mode if you wanna move things around on your panel. Then you got applets and you got your panel settings. If you go into panel settings, you can see you can choose to auto hide your panel if you want. By default, it shows it all the time. And then here you can make your, your size bigger. Personally, I like it a little bigger. You can make it like that as a comfortable size for me. Uh, but you can have it huge if you're really nearsighted or you can have it really tiny. <laughs> but I think the default was around 25. And I guess for the sake of this review, I'll just kind of leave it at 25. And here you can add a new panel if you want to add like say a top panel or something like that. And again, your panel edit mode. So very cool. And then if we go up here, let's look at applets. The applets are the things that are kind of showing up in your panel down here. And so if you want to add more things down to your panel, this is the place to do it. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff and the things that are checked are the ones that are appearing. Clicking on this download button, this will let you download even more stuff off the internet that's not in the list. So here we got other cool things like the weather, uh, the cinema menu, which is a beautiful menu. So if you don't like the default menu or you just want something spicier, you can use cinema menu. There's radio plus plus, just a ton of things. Stark menu, not sure what that is. We got a color picker, that's great if you're like a software developer or you work in graphics, you need colors, you wanna pick it from something, pretty handy. And you got things like sticky notes, locks, keys, indicator, timer, world clock, redshift, 
just tons of stuff. Brightness and gamma, better backgrounds. Huh, that looks interesting, better backgrounds. It looks like uh, some kind of wallpaper applet. Yeah, let's download it and take a look at it. That might be moderately neato because I don't think there's a whole lot of wallpapers that really come with this, except the default tumbleweed stuff. So that might be worth a look. I'm gonna hit add on there. Oh, well, I guess it would help if I selected it first. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to hit plus to add this to our list. And now you can see the checkbox went off and whoa, there's a background. That is cool. And if I hit this configure, you can kind of look at the configuration here and lots of choices. So you can animate your icon when it's downloading. I'm assuming that's the icon down there in the panel. And then under effects, you can add effects if you want. By default, there's none, but you can make like a blur effect. Uh, that sounds kind of interesting. I'm not sure what that blurs, if it blurs the background image or if it's just like blurring the button on the uh, panel. I don't know. Let's hit apply and see what it does. Uh, not seeing anything, but I notice that the panel button is spinning now. And here's some sources. So by default, it's unsplashed, but you also got like uh, Place kitten and a bunch of other stuff. So like if I apply that, then I guess it would change the wallpaper. I'm not sure, but I'll just use unsplash because that's the one I'm familiar with. <laughs> and then here you can even use a custom resolution for your wallpaper. Nice. That's really cool. And then here you got things like you can activate the wallpaper or change it by clicking on the applet. By default, it'll change when the applet reloads and after a certain amount of time, which is defaulting at 15 minutes. So if you want the wallpaper to stay and not change, then you can just turn this off right here. And then that'll just keep one wallpaper displaying all the time. Otherwise you can have it change every 15 minutes like it is now by default. So that is cool, better backgrounds. And it's still spinning there. I'm not quite sure why it's spinning especially because it only needs to update every 15 minutes. But when I look at it, right click, here we got our configure about and remove. So we can remove the app bullet from there. And then that was a right click. By regular click, you can select change background there, or you can save your wallpaper. That's cool too, I like that. So if you find one you especially like, you can save that and use it again. So it doesn't disappear on you in 15 minutes. And then here, Let's look at our desktop background, our default settings here. So by default, what we have for backgrounds is we got our OpenSUSE folder, which looks like there's just one file in there, and then our picture folder. So I guess I'd have to hit this plus button because there was a different background when we booted in. And so I'm assuming that's probably in our user share folder because our pictures is empty. So I'm gonna hit other locations here and then select computer and then let's go to usr our user folder and then go to share and there should be one in here called wallpaper i think or maybe it's backgrounds uh oh yeah there it is wallpaper cool okay so here, here's all those wallpapers that i was thinking we should have so i'm gonna hit open here and now if i select the wallpapers now we can see yeah and there's the one that we started with so yeah not a real lot to choose from so i'm really glad i chose that applet that better backgrounds <laughs> that was kind of a stroke of luck there actually because i didn't know that existed so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to go configure again i'm not sure why that button's still spinning so i'm just going to kind of have a look around here and i think i'm going to select this too clicking on an applet i think it'd be cool to just change your background by clicking on the button down there that would be cool. So if I go down here, I should be able to click on that and change it. And it's not responding. So it must have something to do with that spinning. Hmm. Maybe I'll jump back into the configure again. And it changed on me again. Wow, okay. So I don't know if that was delayed reaction for me clicking on it or 15 minutes just happened to go by. <laughs> so anyways, maybe it has something to do with this effect. How about if I turn that off? because it didn't do anything anyway, and neither does the grayscale. So I'll just change that back to none, hit apply, 
and it changed their background. That's cool. And it stopped spinning. So I think that was the source of the problem. I think there's just some kind of issue with the effects. So I'm going to leave the effects turned off that to none. And then I got clicking and we'll turn after some time back on and on applet. So we'll just have all three of those on. And now if I click that button, it should just let me change wallpaper at a glance. Yes. Nice. Okay. Click again. Beautiful. I like that one. That's cool. I just might keep that. Hmm. Yeah. So then if I look here in the background, it's showing that uh, it changes every 15 minutes. So that's kind of what that message was in case I was in the way there. <laughs> And oops, I clicked on it. Don't. I don't know why I did that. That was a mistake. Uh, that's kind of creepy. How about this one? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I might be able to live with that. Maybe another click. Eh, looks like I'm out in a parking lot. Next. That's kind of a cool city scene there. That's got possibilities. Hmm. Okay, I might be able to live with that one. That's moderately cool. Even better. I like that. It's kind of dark scene there. So maybe that one will work. I think that kind of works with this theme. So back here in the menu, let's take a look at our settings. So here's our settings and of course our backgrounds, which is where we just were. Then we have our effect settings. Typically I always keep these just as their defaults, but if you like tweaking around with the different effects or maybe you don't like the effects, you can turn them off there too. Then we got our font and our theme settings. And here we got stuff like our window borders. I'm just gonna slide that up a bit. So if you wanna change your window borders, by default, we're using the new mix here, but you can also change to any of these. We got like Graybird, Eco Dark, I guess that is. And then we have our Mint Y. So that kind of has the Linux Mint look there. That's kind of cool. And then our Mint X, which is kind of Mint without the green and our Graybird Geeko. I think Numix though is probably the best one out of that bunch there. And then here's our different choices for icons. So I'm just going to bring up Nemo again real quick. And I'm going to change this view here to the icon view. So it'll kind of give us a little better idea of how these changes look. So we got our Fenzia and then Gnome, Edweta, and that looks nice. I'm kind of liking the Edweta the best so far. <laughs> and then there's our Gnome look, kind of the traditional goldish color. And then there's our high contrast. That's pretty good if you have trouble seeing or if you got a cheesy monitor, it might help. So yeah, icons. Then here's our button controls and nothing extra in there, just the new mix and same with the cursors. So if we come down here to our desktop, wow, looks like a lot of desktops. Nice. So I'm just going to move that out of the way just in case a desktop icon changes. I don't know if it will, but let's try our mint wide dark. So there's kind of a dark look. Um, so that's minty looking. We got our green just like on Linux Mint. So that's pretty cool. And there's an aqua setting. So that kind of changed the background a bit. There's a mint wide pink. And not really seeing a difference in that one. How about there? That's mint white purple, but still not really seeing a change there. So maybe not all of those are actually active. I'm going to go back to the new mix because I think the new mix looks really nice. I think that one is actually a winner for a theme. And we got a change in the wallpaper there. Wow. And so we got some dude in the background with big glasses and a beard. <laughs> And here's our account details. This is where we can change our picture. And so we can go down here and select something. And I might go with the grapes. That looks kind of cool. That's got a little bit of a late summer to fall kind of feel to it. And then we got our applets, which is we were just in. Date and time settings. And these are all pretty much our standard stuff. But let's see what desklets are. So a desklet is kind of like a conky. It shows up on your desktop. And so like this clock or digital frame or whatever, we could like turn on the clock there and then it'll show up on the desktop. As you can see right now, it's grayed out there. 
for the settings because you got to actually add it just like we did with the applet so if we go down here click on the plus button then now you can see it cool so that's our little clock desk lit if you're in kde that that would be like a widget equivalent and then there's our digital photo frame so if you had a bunch of pictures in your picture folder i'm assuming they would kind of show up and randomly display in that frame there and then when we hit download you can choose from a whole bunch of other things there's a google calendar desk lit that i'm assuming must sync with your calendar a disk space indicator which is cool a weather desk lit i always like weather stuff so i might have to add that so I'm going to download that and then maybe the disk space thing too. That looks like it could be something handy. That's kind of something a lot of times you'll see in a conky stuff. <laughs> so disk space. So if I was going to just add that by clicking the plus, then it shows up here and it shows that I'm using 11% of my disk, 6.7 gigs out of 63.4 and just dragging that over to the other side there. So that's nice. And then I can add any of these other stuffs on there as well. Or I can just remove it like that. Let's take a look at our weather desk lit. I'm going to add that in and wow, just right off the bat, boom, there it is. 19 degrees out, so beautiful, nice day. What am I doing inside? <laughs> and so here's our data services. And by default, it's using the BBC, but you got some other choices here like open weather and so forth but it looks like all these other choices require an api key or some of them are deprecated like weather.com so it looks like bbc is the way to go so i'm just going to hang with that and then here's you can change your temperature units and all that and then here's where you can opt for what's being displayed up there right now. So if there's certain things you don't want visible or you want to add, here's where you can do it just by toggling the switches on and off. And then our desk lit style and all this stuff I would probably just leave just the way it is. You can bold the city name down there. If you turn it off, then it's not so bold. <laughs> And then you can set our corner radius and our transparency. So if you want it less opaque, you can crank it up there and it'll get darker. Or if you want it more transparent, you can back off on it and it becomes quite transparent. So that's a nice setting too. And I would just kind of stick with the default because I think the default is pretty good actually. So that's our desk lit. Nice. And... <laughs> And that dude in the background, he kind of looks a little bit like a YouTuber. Uh, a guy that trades stock, Ross Cameron, except this guy's older. <laughs> kind of looks like his dad, maybe. Uh, that's funny. Uh, anyways, let's see what else we got here. So back in our settings, if I jump in here, actually everything beyond the desklets, I think are pretty much, well, extensions, that's something I haven't really, if you're not familiar with, cinnamon you know then some of these stuffs you might not really know what they are and so the extensions these are kind of like eh, almost kind of like you could think of them like extensions you'd see in gnome except not really but for example here's transparent panels if you want to make your panels transparent i can download that and then go to manage select it hit plus and then our panel becomes transparent down here so how cool is that so these are other cool little tweaks that you can add to cinnamon uh, are these extensions and nothing's really added by default so these are like extras and the extensions is really kind of cool and it's a little bit overlooked i think by a lot of people and so there are a lot of neat stuff that you can do with extensions so just wanted to draw that to your attention <laughs> And then, of course, our standard stuff, online accounts and panel settings where we just were, preferred apps, screensaver, startup applications. These are all kind of the standard stuff. Disk utility, display settings, graphics, tablet, if you have one, mouse and touchpad, power management. And then our admin stuff here. So it's got a great driver manager, our package management stuff user and group settings if you want to get a little more involved in tweaking your user and group settings you got a GUI for that and there's that Ross Cameron 
20 years in the future, dude. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yes. So, now that we got that done, oh, there's our previews. So, and our wallpaper just changed. Cool. So now we got someone with a horse. That's a nice background, actually. If I go back in our menu here, actually, I don't need to go back in there. I think I covered everything in there. Back in our Nemo, you can see we have Nemo set up really nice. We got all our favorites and shortcuts over there on the side. And so when you kind of put this all together, it really does have a polished, beautiful look to it. And I think they did a great job here with tweaking OpenSUSE kind of the way most people would probably tweak it after they install it. I know I've installed OpenSUSE a number of times and I always got to do all these little things to it after I get it installed, like adding the Pac-Man repos. And that allows me to install things like VLC player and so forth. Cause there's a lot of apps you can't get unless you have the Pac-Man repos. So for me, that's like a really big one. And then little tweaks here and there that you got to do. Really, that's all been done for you. So you don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like they set it for you and then you can forget it. <laughs> and the other thing I think is really great about this distro is you don't have to, it's not bloated right out of the box. You know, a lot of times people will base things on another distro and then they'll just load it up with all kinds of stuff that you probably don't need. And this really has mostly the basics other than the Office Suite. I mean, if you're not a fan of LibreOffice, you might have to uninstall that to add something else. However, that's not a big deal. And LibreOffice is actually an excellent suite. So in most cases, I think most people wouldn't really have a need to uninstall it. <laughs> and then as we scrolled earlier, it's not loaded with graphics apps or sound apps. It gives you all the basics that you need that way. I can go in and install what I want and I don't have to go remove a whole bunch of stuff. So I think Gecko Linux team really nailed it with hitting that perfect balance of not too much and not too little. I like it and it does have polish. It does look very polished, especially after I added in that background because there's not really a whole lot of wallpapers, only the default open SUSE stuff. So adding that extension in there, I think was really cool or not extension. It was an applet that better background. So yeah, I don't know. You know, if I was a gecko guys, I might even just have that enabled by default, just to enhance the wallpaper and just make the desktop even cooler right out of the gate. So yeah, one for the suggestion box. <laughs> and with that, I hope this was helpful because I was really excited about looking at this and I think this is something I would absolutely definitely totally use. I know when it comes to RPM distros, Fedora is actually one of my favorites and that's usually my first choice and OpenSUSE is usually my second choice, but Gecko has really kind of moved that OpenSUSE right up in there with Fedora. Yeah, I would actually be torn. It would be a toss up for me now because this, I think I would be just as happy with as Fedora. And I just have a sneaking suspicion that if I ran it for two or three weeks, I'd probably come to the same conclusion. <laughs> so anyways, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hey, leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.